Okay, so 10 minutes is way too short for all the stuff to tell you about in Spike GLX. So uh, I want to tell you that I am going to take the slide deck and put it on my download site in the help section. So you can go through the slides. You can see the annotation that I have uh, for myself giving this talk. And there are several videos attached to the slides that I won't be able to show to make it within the, the time frame. But you can watch those videos. So Spike GLX is one of the uh, two uh, popular GUI softwares for talking to NeuroPixels probes. This work is supported by uh, Johns Hopkins and uh, Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And again, I'm going to go quickly and just show uh, some highlights of things that you should know in the software. First of all, everything that you need for Spike GLX and all of the offline processing tools, as well as uh, many manuals, uh, quick references, help videos, uh, all of that is available from the download site, which is available uh, at the blue link. And I would urge everybody uh, to get the latest version of the software uh, because that will run all the newest hardware like one boxes and all of the newest probes as well as all the old stuff. So it's good to get the new version. The download site looks very quickly like this. I'm not going to dwell on this, but there's tabs across the top uh, to get different uh, categories of information and a table of contents, and you can scroll. In particular, uh, if you're just getting started, you should look at this quick reference uh, PowerPoint, which highlights the main fields that you should pay attention to when configuring a run for the first time. Um, also, the most important documents to read and be familiar with, I still feel, is the user manual. And I want to point out that there's a new document just created for one box. Uh, there's a one box quick reference, which will tell you all about how it works and how to set it up with Spike GLX. Um, I'm going to skip this. So just, well, just briefly, uh, we used to have a shank map. Uh, which is now retired and become a geometry map. So we're switching from describing the sites that are selected on a probe by just their index number in a grid to the actual physical coordinates and microns where these are in a coordinate system. And you can learn all about that in the metadata 30 document indicated here. Um, in the configuration dialog, uh, a couple of things to point out. Um, Let's go uh, right away to uh, a one box. This is this is what a one box looks like. Uh, it's a combination of two devices in one, uh, so it can do uh, neural pixels probes via two uh, ports that work just like a PXI base station. So it's like a small base station, and it also has uh, twelve analog channels that you can uh, record from. And they can be digital outputs and play waveforms. This is uh, a USB 3 device. It is not a PXI device. Um, so when you are, oh, let me mention that uh, it is on sale now. It was just announced at SFN. So you can go to the neuralpixels.org website and you can put in an order for one. They're 3,600 euro. Uh, but again, going back, it's not a PXI device, so it doesn't have a slot. Uh, but when we uh, in Spike GLX have you tell us uh, where you plugged in your probes, you need to tell us the slot and port and dock where you plugged in your parts. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the configure slots dialog, which is shown here on the left. You're going to click on your uh, one box. It should be turned on, so it will show up here. You click on it, and then you can assign it a slot number, and now it can show up in the table. Uh, moving on in the uh, IMEX setup tab, I want to point out just a couple of features that you should know about. So there's a low latency checkbox, which is a trade-off. Uh, you're going to have a little bit more CPU activity, but you'll have lower latency when you're fetching data from remote programs that you can use with Spike GLX that you write yourself using our SDKs. Um, one of the most important features, I think, in the software is the uh, probe survey mode. So if you check the box here, 
um, and set a number of seconds that you want to sample per bank, what happens is that activity is sampled from the entire surface of the probe, bank by bank by bank. Uh, so it starts at one, moves to the next, moves to the next uh, for however many seconds. And then all of these data are concatenated together in one file uh, that you can open up offline and scroll through that activity bank by bank, or uh, you can uh, integrate all the activity so that you can see activity everywhere all at once. And this is super helpful for figuring out where you want to select sites for readout. And there's a video on one of the slides that demonstrates that process. Also on this tab, uh, you'll get much better signal to background for listening in audio and for looking at data in the shank viewers uh, when you click on these uh, filtered stream buffers uh, so that we have better quality data feeding those uh, visualizations. You get to set the bandpass filter range and the data will go through common average referencing. So it's much cleaner looking for those features. Um, as always, this is where you come to double click to open up the uh, IMRO table editor, which is the tool that selects which sites you want to read out. And that has been uh, updated massively in the latest releases. Uh, it's much more flexible now. So the boxes that you click to put on the probe, uh, when you click, you're going to put the center. These boxes can now be of varied sizes. Uh, unlike before, they can be the full width of the shank or they can be half shank width boxes. Uh, when you click a box, you can uh, you can grab it and resize it from either end. And again, they can be different sizes from each other. So it's much easier to tailor your readout to where the activity is more precisely. You're not limited to just a few same size boxes. Um, as always, uh, selecting which sites you want to read out from is much easier done with some context. And in Spike GLX, we give you the ability to, to uh, select sites while you're looking at anatomy uh, mapped onto the probe coming from uh, Pinpoint or Trajectory Explorer. And you also have various ways to see activity. Um, on the next slide, during an online run, uh, when you open up the Shank Viewer, uh, Clicking this button from the graphs window, it opens up with the view tab as the default tab where you have uh, activity that is colorized. Uh, but you can then switch to the edit tab and you can move your uh, regions of interest around uh, to lasso activity and then continue recording. Also, I want to point out something a lot of people don't realize. You can right click uh, on channels, either clicking on it, right clicking on a trace or uh, sites on the probe. When you do that, you pop open a context menu where you can do things with that channel, like listen to that channel, either in your left or right ear, or send the channel to one of the four uh, spike viewer uh, viewer um, uh, devices here, or uh, mask off a channel so it doesn't contribute to common average referencing. Uh, and you can also get to the thing we call the color TTL uh, dialog, and that looks like this. And what's, what Color TTL does is uh, lets you specify any TTL channel and any stream that you're recording. We can then monitor uh, that channel and look for TTL pulses. And whenever those pulses are high, we make a color stripe here. You can see in channel eight, uh, it's aligned with, uh, with the, these pulses. And that color stripe is mapped to all data streams. So you can see when spiking activity is occurring, for example, in conjunction with uh, with laser stimulation, for example, and you can do this with four different channels and four colors. I'm really running out of time quickly. Uh, when you're using Pinpoint or Trajectory Explorer uh, in Spike GLX, you want to be sure to open up. Uh, you want to be in uh, in an online run. Open up the Shank Viewer, go to the View tab. That's where you're going to see the annotation and the colors coming from the Atlas. And you have uh, the ability to colorize your uh, shank or your traces according to that data. That's where you do this. Um, there's a video here I'm not going to be able to show about using the offline file viewer. You can open up multiple files that were recorded at the same time in a run. You can time link them together and scroll them together so that you can look at 
uh, for example, TTL activity and uh, trace activity that happens synchronously. That's super useful. Another thing, um, moving on to the next slide, N another thing, another video I'm not going to show you uh, is opening up one of these probe survey runs that will allow you to scroll bank by bank by bank or integrate the activity. It's the activity everywhere. And you can edit and create a new IMRO table based on what you're looking at. I'm already over time, so I'll keep it brief on the next slides. Uh, File Viewer will also let you export uh, a small subset of your data, including only a few channels or a, a small time range. Um, and you can share that uh, with other people easily or use it for debugging. And you can also save these data if you want as a CSV file or a regular run. A um, couple other features that are already in the software you might not know about. If you do control T, you can get a whole different separate graphs window with two more streams and two more shank viewers to look at. So you can look at four uh, probes at the same time on the same screen on your screens. Um, there's a metrics window, control M, that opens up the window you see here that has a wealth of readouts on the health of the, of the system and whether it's keeping up with the bandwidth of the data. Um, and it's, you get a uh, simple uh, color, uh, green, yellow, or red, uh, telling you whether you're doing well or starting to fall behind. In the graphs window, uh, you can... Uh, uh, orient the uh, the two stream views to be side by side, or you can put them one on top of the other in this menu here, or just show one of them. Real quick, new features that are on their way, which are very useful. I'm going to point out in particular a waveform designer uh, for um, opto tagging. Uh, you can design waveforms, and then you'll be able to specify triggered playback of those waveforms uh, for either one box or NI output. I'm going to have a PSDH viewer in the software for opto tagging, and I'm going to see what I can do to make Spike GLX work with the Open EFIS um, Onyx based uh, commutator system. So you'll be able to do live behaving animals and not twist your cables in a reliable way. So we want to be able to uh, let you use that system. I'm almost done. Uh, sorry, I'm going over a little bit. Spike GLX, it can be scripted. Uh, you can in integrate it into a workflow and control it from uh, another remote program that you write. And lastly, Spike GLX is just one part of an ecosystem that includes a, a whole bunch of post-processing tools uh, to condition the data for uh, use in a spikes order and also to time align the data spikes and other uh, things that you're recording. And there's a pipeline to string all these kinds of things together written by Jennifer Colonel. And that's it.